Today we're going to talk about the Skills Assessment Australian Computer Society and we're going to do a very broad overview of the requirements. So if you need advice about migrating to Australia, we can definitely help you there. Now this is going to be a very broad overview of the requirements, so you can kind of see whether you're eligible or not, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I kind of meet those requirements. Then if you are interested, you can book a consultation with us, or you could visit courses.tracymigration.com.au, where I do a much deeper dive into the requirements and for you to understand them. Then there's a bunch of other ones, so let's just go through them, but they get very complicated and there's lots to do. So let's just do a broad overview of that. So if you have an overseas degree, that's a bachelor degree, and at the required level, so it has to be equivalent to an Australian bachelor's degree. An Australian bachelor's degree is taught at a certain level, and it's definitely over a course of three years. If you did an overseas degree, and they call it bachelor, but you only studied it for two years, I would say that's a red flag, and it may not be equivalent to an Australian degree. Anyways, if that's you, then you must have two years of work experience in a highly relevant field to what you study. So same thing, so bachelor of information technology, highly relevant to software engineering, you need to have two years of work experience as a software engineer. This video hopefully gives you a broad overview so you know which direction you're heading, but I would say definitely get the right advice or get some more information in regards to it before you lodge a skills assessment for it because it gets quite complicated. If you completed a bachelor degree, which is at the required level, but it's ICT minor, so it's less than 33%, then you need to have five years of relevant ICT work experience in that occupation. That five Five years work experience must also be in the last 10 years. If it's not in the last 10 years, then you need to have six years in total. Super confusing. But yeah, that's for people who have an ICT minor degree. So there's some like degrees that are like Bachelor of Business and then there's ICT minor subjects in there. So that's where you would see you potentially could be eligible that way for it. Then there's if you have a Bachelor degree, which is an ICT minor, that's not closely related to the work experience that you have. So again, like one of those Bachelor of Business degrees, which has a minor in information systems and business analytics, whereas you worked as a software engineer. If you need to get work experience as a software engineer, then you'll probably need six years of work experience. So that's kind of like the overview. Now, if any of them were you, then you need to be able to provide the evidence to back it up. Because as you can see, a lot of it requires a qualification. So you need to have the certificate plus the transcript because they're looking closely at that transcript to see if you have the right qualification and subjects for it. But you also need to have the work experience to back it up. And ACS are pretty difficult when it comes to work experience and how they assess it. You must have the relevant work experience. You must have the work reference that lists all the required work duties required for that occupation. So important for that one. You need to have pay slips and they usually ask for all pay slips. And I know that's so difficult when you have like years and years of experience. It's all right if you just have one year of work experience, that's nice and neat. If you have like 10 years, it gets a bit tricky there. You need to have proof of the pay slips, like how they were paid. So you must have bank statements, superannuation and tax documents. Complicated. So there's a lot to provide there. So with the work experience, it does not need to be full time, 20 hours per week will be fine. So I've got courses.tracymigration.com.au. There will be mini courses there which go through the requirements for each different section. So I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with people who need it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.